8.8 practice problems. A buffer solution is made up of acetic acid and sodium acetate. The major equilibria of the buffer system is represented above. Which of the following equilibria could support the claim that the addition of a small amount of sodium hydroxide to the buffer would result in only a very small change in pH? So um, when we look at our uh, net ionic equation, we're going to see that uh, we are basically just going back and forth between um, the acetate and acetic acid portion. If we were to add hydroxide to the left-hand side of our equation, which we would need to uh, see on um, our equation here, where we have the reverse of a reaction or where we have uh, hydroxide being added, which would only be present in either B or C, uh, then we would uh, precipitate out water. It matches most closely here, where we add hydroxide to the acetic acid, and it precipitates out water and gives us a um, acetate ion in solution. The other option here where we are precipitating out water but we do not have where the hydroxide is being captured uh, is not going to be our best representation. So option B is going to be our best representation because it shows the actual capturing of the hydroxide and where it goes. Um, and why that uh, excess acetate is a good buffer. The acid ionization equilibrium for hydrofluoric acid is represented by the chemical equation above. A student claims that the pH of the solution that contains 0.1 molar um, hydrofluoric acid and 0.1 molar sodium fluoride will change only slightly when small amounts of acids or bases are added. Which of the following bear, uh, pairs of equations can the student use to justify their claim. So um, when we are dealing with um, the hydrofluoric acid, uh, very, very small amounts of it are going to dissociate into the overall fluorine. However, uh, from the sodium fluoride, we have an excess of uh, fluorine ions uh, in solution that could be recaptured and turned into hydrofluoric acid should an additional um, acid or base be added. So we are looking for um, acid and base to be added and then that they are associated with the correct um, ions for what they are going to capture. So uh, as I look at option A, um, A, C, and uh, D all match here where we have the hydrofluoric acid being associated with the uh, hydroxide that um, going ahead and ripping the hydrogen off of the fluorine producing the uh, fluoride ion within solution. Option B, this is not the acid that is going to be within the solution um, so that's not going to be our best option choice. A, C, and D currently have all of the same for our um, acid option choices. So we'll have to look to the base option choice to see which would be best. So uh, from here, um, we're going to look for the acid to be added and see what would happen if we added acid. The hydroxide is not the base that would be present within the solution, so that is not a good answer choice. Between C and D, we are supposed to be adding acid to uh, precipitate out the uh, hydrofluoric acid. I'm sorry, not precipitate, that's not the correct term, uh, to go ahead and uh, reconstitute the hydrofluoric acid ion that is not dissociated in the water. And so um, D is going to be our best option. You also see that uh, fluorine would be ripping a hydrogen off of water, which is very stable. Uh, to reform the hydrofluoric acid. And then we would have uh, loose 
um, hydroxides present within the solution, and that's just not going to be um, a thing that occurs within solution. The equilibrium for the reaction uh, between dimethylamine, a weak base, and water is represented by the equation below. The pH, uh, the table shows the pH for the three solutions of dimethylamine at 25 degrees Celsius. So you can see that we are increasing our concentration of dimethylamine, uh, doubling it each time, and we are not having um, a large influx of change for our pH here. A student mixes 100 milliliters of 0.2 molar dimethylamine with 100 milliliters of 0.2 molar dimethyl ammonium chloride and claims that if a small amount of a strong base is added to the mixture, then the resulting change in pH of the mixture would be smaller than the change in pH that would result from adding the same amount of a strong base uh, to 200 milliliters of just 0.2 uh, molar dimethylamine. Which are the best uh, explanations whether or not the student's claim is correct. So um, when we look at what we are adding here, we have the dimethylamine and then we have the dimethyl ammonium chloride here. And um, this is going to be a, a conjugate uh, base. Um, sorry, a conjugate acid uh, to our um, dimethylamine, and so we would end up having um, a salt where we have uh, precipitated off some amount of uh, the uh, dimethyl ammonium amine, uh, sorry, dimethyl ammonium chloride, and uh, we would have the um, ion present ready to accept the um, hydrogen readily uh, for the dimethylamine, since that uh, formation of a uh, of the weak base and the uh, conjugate acid um, being present uh, within a solution is going to be a buffer solution. We are going to say that the claim is correct, so that would eliminate options C and D, and then we can just go ahead and look. Uh, between A and B to see which is best. So A states, the claim is correct because the mixture contains only half of the dimethylamine, uh, that the 0.2 molar dimethylamine contains. The lesser amount of the base in the mixture makes the pH of the mixture lower than the pH of the 0.2 molar dimethylamine. Therefore, when a small amount of strong base is added, the pH change of the mixture will be smaller than the change of the pH of of the 0.2 molar dimethylamine. This is not a good answer. Um, this has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that we have um, that conjugate acid present within the solution and therefore would be able to uh, go back into my, uh, my uh, weak base form easily if we were to add a, uh, a stronger base there. So A is not going to be a great answer, but we'll go ahead and look at B to see if if it is worse or if it is better. So option B says the claim is correct because the mixture contains significant amounts of the acid, uh, the dimethylamine acid, um, which can be partially neutralized uh, by adding a strong base, thereby reducing the pH. In 0.2 dimethylamine, the concentration of the acid is very small, therefore the uh, added strong base is not neutralized and the pH would change more. This is going to be, um, again, my best answer choice because we are mentioning the fact that we are going to have that um, conjugate acid uh, ion already present within the solution and therefore be able to um, reconstitute our uh, original dimethylamine and uh, have a buffer for our uh, overall solution and not have large swings in pH. The pH of solutions for four acids prepared in various concentrations were measured um, and recorded in the table above. The four acids are, in no particular or order, chlorous, hydrochloric, lactic, and proponic. A 25 milliliter sample of, the, of a one molar solution of acid is mixed with 25 mils of 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide. Which of the following best explains what happens to the pH of the mixture when a few drops of one molar 
uh, nitric acid is added. So the uh, we are uh, combining acid A, or sorry, acid one. Um, so we need to figure out if acid one is a strong acid or not, and so we know that we have um, our molarity uh, for our strong acid as one molar. So just to check, negative log of a one molar acid should have the pH of zero. We can see that the pH is 2.44, meaning that this is going to be a weak acid. Um, and so any amount of the acid that uh, went ahead and uh, dissociated within the solution once we added the sodium hydroxide, um, we'll, we will have some amount of the conjugate base um, available to go ahead and recapture the um, extra hydrogen ions that are uh, put off by the strong acid, the nitric acid. So our pH should say approximately the same uh, because that conjugate base will react with the extra hydroxide ion, or sorry, hydronium ions, not the hydroxide. Um, our conjugate base, the salt portion, um, the anion portion of the acid is what's going to uh, capture those extra hydrogen ions. A solution is prepared by adding 100 mils of a one molar um, acetic acid and 100 mils of a one molar sodium acetate uh, solution. The solution is stirred and the pH is measured to be 4.73. After three drops of one molar hydrochloric acid are added to the solution, the pH of the solution is measured and is still 4.3. Which of the following equations represents the chemical reaction that accounts for the fact that the acid was added but there was no detectable change in pH? So um, we have the acetate that is going to be um, present within the solution that is going to be able to capture any additional hydrogen ions that are produced from the hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid, uh, so it should fully dissociate and um, re-establish uh, the uh, non-dissociated acetic acid. And so we're going to look through and we're going to see that we have the acetate be the thing that is reacting with the hydrogen to reform the uh, acetic acid not dissociated and water. That is only represented by option C, so that is going to be my best option choice. Mixtures that uh, would be considered buffers include which of the following? So buffers are going to be um, a weak acid and it's uh, a base that would produce uh, the ion from the acid. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, so that's not going to be an option. Hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid, so that's good. Sodium fluoride is going to produce the ion that would uh, be the conjugate base. So that's good. And then uh, hydrobromic acid is also a strong acid. So only option two would produce a buffer since only option two meets those two criteria of being a weak acid or weak base and their conjugate uh, uh, base or conjugate acid uh, ion uh, being there provided by a salt. The graph below shows a titration curve that results when 100 milliliters of a 0.025 molar acetic acid is titrated with one molar sodium hydroxide. What part of the curve corresponds to the optimum buffer action for the acetic acid and um, acetate ion pair? So um, we are looking for um, optimum uh, leveling off and when we are dealing with the acetate doing a good job at uh, not allowing the pH to rise to a base pH and so that would be point V.